1740, the Dutch VOC ship, the Rooswijk, sank. With it, the cargo and almost 240 crew members with their personal belongings. This is a film about what archaeologists found back on the seabed after 280 years. We have in the region of, I would say, 5,000 artefacts probably, uh, if not even more. We are still in the process of properly quantifying that. How do you conserve these artefacts? And what secrets do they hold? Almost in a way, these artifacts have personalities of their own, and that's something that you really come to love and appreciate about each one individually. They tell us a story about the people on board the ship. Who were they? Where did they come from? You must imagine that this was a time where the question was bigger than the Netherlands aanbod. So that means, by definition, that if you want to get a ship full, you have to look at the borders of the Netherlands. These men have no known grave, uh, tombstones, uh, so hopefully my pictures will provide something of that for them. This is the legacy of the Rooswijk. From 2016 on, the International Programme for Maritime Heritage of the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands has been working on the Rooswijk Research Project collaborating with Historic England and executing two diving expeditions with MSDS Marine in 2017 and 2018. The Rooswijk, a Dutch VOC ship en route to the colonies of East Asia, perished in January 1740 off the coast of Kent, England. It was fully loaded with goods and supplies. After two years of research, 2018 marks the final season of diving on the wreck for maritime archaeologist and head of the program, Martijn Manders, it concludes more than three years of work on the site. Je voelt je een beetje nostalgisch als je ophoudt met zo'n groot project. We hebben twee jaar lang keihard gewerkt aan aan deze vindplaats, qua opgraving. We zijn natuurlijk ook al weer langer bezig met de voorbereidingen. En we hebben ontzettend hard gewerkt. En dat doe je met een relatief klein team. Met dat kleine team werk je heel nauw samen, dag en nacht. En uh, uh, ja, dan, dan, dan is, het, is het natuurlijk wel jammer dat het, uh, dat het ophoudt. Maar we hebben hele mooie resultaten gehad. Uh, en we kunnen een fantastisch verhaal schrijven over de Rooswijk. Dus daar ben ik wel heel erg blij om. Martijn seems proud, and he has every right to be. In the 2018 season, the team recovered a staggering amount of artifacts from the seabed. We hebben een enorme verscheidenheid van vondsten gevonden, uh, omhoog gehaald. Kookgereedschap, grote ankers, koperplaten met uh, ijzeren staven, met tonnen, kisten met sabels, kist met vingerhoedjes, persoonlijke bezittingen, navigatieinstrumenten, uh, bewapening natuurlijk, uh, munitie, uh, pistolen, musketten, dus mooie tinnenborden, uh, kannen, dat soort materiaal. Among the finds was this beautifully preserved large knee that used to carry the first deck just above the hold. An important discovery that allows the team to grasp the true size of the ship. Well, look at this timber. Enormously high. And as you can see, this is pure oak. And it was made of a big tree with a branch on the side of it. And this is a, what they call a knee. And the knee supported the big deck beam, which is going across the ship, and which was holding, of course, a deck. By this kind of timbers, you can see how big the ship was. I'm standing here, probably in the hold of the Rooswijk, with all the cargo around me, and I cannot even reach the deck itself. So enormously big. This is why we took it out just to record it and to see something more about the structure of the Rooswijk itself. During the last few weeks of the excavation in Ramsgate, the RCE and Historic England have organized an open day for the public to get information about the project. Educating the public is one of the key facets of the project. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, 
I often walk along Pegwell Bay and find different bits of ship that are washed up in the storms. Um, and to see this in this, this detail and the amount of knowledge that the people here are, are able to apply to what's found is, is absolutely brilliant. I love it. Nou, wat ik heel mooi vond om te zien is uh, uh, dat er sommige onderwerpen als een soort van schaar, ik weet niet wat het precies zijn, dat dat gewoon nog beweegt. Uh, dat vind ik wel, uh, wel heel mooi om te zien. Dat na zoveel jaar uit het zand, zoveel honderd jaar uit het zand, dat dat nog gewoon, uh, gewoon werkt. Het is heel interessant eigenlijk, ja. Ik vind het heel erg dat we hier zijn geweest, al een jaar geleden. Dus het is goed om te zien wat je hebt, ja. Het is heel interessant. Ik heb alleen het half van het gezicht gekeken en de details zijn geweldig. Ik was gewoon daar naar een handel en het is gekeken in een pattern al de weg door. Um, and it's really, I've talked to two of the conservators so far and that's been really interesting as well. This is Forth Cumberland, a coastal defence fortification in Portsmouth that was built in the second half of the 18th century. Historic England uses this historic fort as a conservation laboratory. Many artefacts found on the Rosevike site have been brought here for further study. We have in the region of, I would say, 5,000 artefacts probably, uh, if not even more. We are still in the process of properly quantifying that. So some of the artefacts are really complex and uh, have quite um, complex conservation needs. Um, but as we've started working on them and made little discoveries, that has been really exciting to actually uh, find out more details and sort of go on a journey to, to unravel this mystery now. Do we think Just these are copper alloy? I'm not sure, I think so, because they have kind of the same density right, as, as the rest. Kim Roche and Nicole Schouten are part of the team stationed at Cumberland. Every day they conserve, catalogue and clean the various artefacts of the wreck. They employ a different number of techniques to chip away the dirt, grime and erosion in order to find the hidden gems of the Rooswijk. So here we have an inkwell um, that was obviously used for, yeah, for writing. Uh, so here you would open it and you would dip your quill in the ink. Um, there's a little drawer here as well. So here there used to be quite a lot of dense concretion which formed during the burial in the marine environment. We've removed it through mechanical action um, so initially just different kinds of cleaning instruments and now we've moved on to a crushed walnut shell which is a mild abrasive and is very good at removing concretions from soft metal objects like pewter which is an alloy of lead and tin and it can quite easily be scratched because it is quite soft. And while she was in the process of cleaning it a tiny little mark appeared so it would be really cool if we can uh, track who the maker of this pewter inkwell was. So this is a lead weight, we believe. It has the one inscription, which Nicole can tell you more about. It was found in a concretion with two other weights that are marked two and three respectively. The one we believe it indicates like a one pounder. Um, in here, you can see, so this will be the number three. Here you can see the three, which is, we believe, a three-pounder. So this would be made of lead, and this is the iron part. And if you look very closely over here, you can see three crosses that are vertically, uh, and that is the symbol of Amsterdam. So here we have a trumpet, which is one of our favorite artifacts. Um, if you look here, you can see a beautiful decoration uh, we also took an x-ray of, of this trumpet part and under the concretion uh, there are shells. So it's like a chain with shells. It's absolutely beautiful. They would have been using it for, for music, but also if there was uh, danger of any kind, they would have used the trumpet to alarm everyone. Yeah. So it may have been the trumpet that was blown during that fateful night. You know, you spend so many times looking at an x-ray. What do you think this is? What does that look like to you? Do you see any inscriptions here? Am I going crazy? Am I, you know, seeing something that's not there? And then, you know, you start working on something and it finally starts to take shape. And then out of nowhere, there's an object with a huge surprise on it. And it is 
the ultimate reward in this job, I would say. Even in the early 18th century, the VOC could be considered the first true multinational company. Jelle van Lottem is senior researcher at the Huygens Institute in Amsterdam. He is particularly interested in economic development and migration during the Dutch Golden Age, when the VOC became the world's first true multinational company. 1740 was a time where the Netherlands population nauwelijks groeide. Maar de economie, en zeker de maritieme economie, nog steeds uh, wel expanderen, wel groeiden. Dus dat betekende dat de vraag naar werknemers groter was dan het aanbod. En dat betekende dus dat, je, dat, dat de, de VOC, maar ook andere, uh, wat we nu bedrijven zouden noemen, genoodzaakt waren om buitenlandse uh, werknemers aan te trekken. En die kwamen in grote getalen simpelweg om, omdat de vraag zo hoog was. 46% van de werknemers bij de VUC, en dan hebben we het over uh, zeelieden en soldaten samen, uh, waren afkomstig uit het buitenland. Duitsland, uh, Noorwegen, Zweden, uh, Denemarken, wat we tegenwoordig Polen uh, uh, noemen, maar zeker ook uit uh, wat nu uh, België is. En dan met name uit Vlaanderen, maar ook uit Frankrijk uh, en zelfs uit Groot-Brittannië. Dus dat is een enorm aantal. Dus bijna de helft van alle werknemers aan boord van een VOC-schip bestond uit, uh, uh, uit iemand uit een ander land. But who were these people? Thanks to genealogical research, we now know the names of 21 crew members of the Roosweg. There are no known images or paintings of any of them. Graham Scott from Wessex Archaeology in Bristol has been diving on the Roosweg since that first assessment of the site in 2016. He has also tasked himself with giving some of the crew members a face. Crew members like senior merchant Barend Lont from the port city of Rotterdam, who was only 34 years old when the Roosweg departed. He was a leader, first mate, in some ways quite uh, an authority. Perhaps even he was, you know, fairly hard bitten. Uh, I imagine he was on course to become one of the VOC captains, uh, had he lived. Barend left home for the sea at 10 years old. His personal life is marked by tragedy. His first wife, Adriana van Dijk, dies while giving birth in 1725, while he was out at sea. In 1729, he marries Elizabeth Weitings. Their first child dies soon after being born, and a year later his oldest son passed away as well. To make matters worse, Barent and Elizabeth lose another child in 1737. Three years later, Barent perishes on the Roosweg, childless. I'd like to... Um, sounds a bit grand, but in, in some way I'd like to put the people back on the ship. Um, because we don't have any portraits of them. We don't know what they looked like. I am imagining it. You know, it's speculation on my part. But I want to get people to think about the, uh, the men who died as individuals, what they looked like, what they were about. Uh, and I think drawing a, a portrait is a powerful way in. There are many stories like Barents. This is Gerrit Haffelman from Ham in Germany. Gerrit was a ship's surgeon. He had a long-standing career with the VOC and made several trips to Asia. He also had a little side business in money lending and speculation. Gerrit and Barend, two lives cut short by the sinking of the Roosweg. In the Roosweg project, access to information and cross-fertilization between different disciplines is key. One of the spearheads of the project is training the next generation of archaeologists, says Manders. We have been it ook heel doelbewust gebruikt om capaciteit te vergroten, om te gaan trainen. Uh, om studenten de kans te geven om mee te werken aan een opgraving. Om conservatoren of studenten die conservering uh, doen uh, te laten participeren in het project. Daarnaast is dat multidisciplinaire. Archeologie, historisch onderzoek, genealogisch onderzoek. Dat is geweldig, dat is fantastisch. Want dat zijn dus disciplines die uh, je heel erg 
parallel aan elkaar kan, uh, kan uitvoeren. Maar juist door die crossovers te krijgen, juist door met dezelfde materialen te gaan werken, leer je heel veel van elkaar. En uh, dat maakt het onderzoek van de Rooswijk ook zo ontzettend spannend. By working closely together with uh, English and Dutch specialists, uh, we can cross-fertilize and we can take advantage of the knowledge that everyone can bring to this project. Of course, the uh, Rooswijk is, is such a Dutch story, isn't it? Als je de verhalen wil vertellen over ons verleden, kan je dat op verschillende manieren doen. Naast de woorden, naast de geluiden, heb je ook de objecten waar je naar kan kijken. En we halen niet alleen die objecten uit die scheepswrakken. Als archeologen zijn we juist bezig om de verhalen rondom die wrakken omhoog te halen. Al die kleine informatiedeeltjes die we bij elkaar halen, die maken het verhaal.